Thanks to one password for sponsoring a portion of this video. So sometimes you can't trust the rumors and companies can still surprise you and I love it. We actually, I think, had a ton of surprises from the Apple MacBook Pro event. Here are my top five favorite things that Apple announced in order. So what's old is kind of new again. So we do have a brand new yet very familiar design. It's sort of a weird turn of events the past few years. Apple's been listening to consumers and bringing back things that they've had the courage uh, to get rid of. So first there are two MacBook Pros. There's a 14 inch and there's a 16 inch MacBook Pro and they have ditched the touch bar. I'll say that again because I'm excited and I'm happy. They have ditched the touch bar with physical function keys. Can you imagine? It's amazing, there's an actual escape key there. Um, beyond that, they brought back MagSafe, which looks identical to the old MagSafe, uh, but now you've got quick charge capabilities. It can charge up to 50% in 30 minutes, which is awesome. You can also charge via the Thunderbolt 4 ports that are there. They also brought back an SD card slot and full-size HDMI, things that we use all the time. There's been so many times when I've been out on a shoot and I have to search for a dongle to get footage off my SD card. It's been a pain, it's been usable and doable, uh, but now being able to have all of that built in a computer is absolutely awesome. So I do wanna give Apple credit for backtracking, listening to consumers, but giving a design and features I think a lot of people are going to want. So how about two new processors? Um, no M1X, no M2. In fact, the M1 name is staying around. Uh, meet the M1 Pro and the beast mode M1 Max. So let's start with the Pro, 200 gigabytes per second on the memory department. Bandwidth is three times that of M1, up to 32 gigabytes of unified memory. Same memory being used by the GPU and the CPU cores, eight high performance cores, 70% faster performance, 16 core GPU, two times faster graphics than M1, Media Engine ProRes acceleration, absolutely incredible from performance. Or had that been all Apple announced, I think people would have been generally pretty happy. This is going to be a screamer for video editing, for 3D processing and rendering, uh, but they upped it again with the M1 Max. So up to 64 gigabytes of RAM. So this is a 10 core CPU, 32 core GPU, meaning it's going to be around four times faster than M1, and what I can't wait for uh, is two times faster media encoding, seven times faster for graphics than standard integrated graphics right now. Just absolutely incredible, there's a lot of specs, but suffice to say, these things are going to be just bombers when it comes to performance. And it's not that much that gets me super excited, but what I do for video editing, time is generally money, and this is going to save a lot of time. Uh, but I promise I will talk about the money, so you can expect these don't come cheap. So now that new Macs are here, legitimately the first app I download whenever I get a new phone or a new computer is 1Password. You probably are very familiar with it. It is the premier password management system going. It's what I use, what my wife uses, what people at JFL here in the studio use. Uh, it is absolutely amazing. I used to have the same password for everything and I realized very quickly how unsafe that was. 1Password auto-generates passwords for me. It works with Face ID and Touch ID, depending if you're on your phone or your Mac. It'll automatically fill the passwords in for you so you don't have to worry about it. It'll generate the passwords so they are secure. You can set the parameters. They just added email masking as well, so if you wanna sign up for something, you don't have to put in your actual email. They take all the stress and pressure out of worrying about your password, remembering what they are. One password will make your life immensely easier, and most importantly, make your digital world more secure. If you wanna check out One Password, and I think you absolutely should, just hit the link down below. You know, if you looked at your iPhone and seen that notch, do you like it? We've got notchy McNotch face here uh, on the 14 and 16. It does not have Face ID. So I'm just gonna get that out of the way. There's no Face ID inside of that notch. What you do have uh, is a new and improved and higher resolution 1080p FaceTime camera. So you've got an f2.0 aperture. It'll be two times better in low light. That's all good. The display at that notch is hidden in also got awesome too. So the bezels got way thinner, 3.5 millimeter bezels uh, on the side, 60% thinner on top. 
the menu bar kind of raises up around the notches. So while the computer sizes are 16 and 14 inch technically, it's really 16.2 inch and 14.2 inch. Actually now it's 120 hertz refresh rate, uh, which is awesome. Uh, it'll scale up and down if you're editing, you can set it and lock it, uh, which I think is pretty cool. But that brings us to our next thing, pricing. You can expect this is not the cheapest machines in the world. The 14 inch, which does not have the max, but the M1 Pro version starts at a not horrible $19.99 for the eight core, 14 core GPU. So it does go all the way up to almost $5,900. Storage though is, is nice, starts at 512 and go all the way up to eight terabytes, which is awesome. The SSDs are now way faster there. Where things get really expensive is on the 16 inch side where you can get either the Pro or the Max of the M1 chip. So it's gonna start at $24.99. That's gonna get you that same 10 core, 16 core GPU. And just guess what's gonna go all the way up to. Uh, if you guess just about $6,100, you would be correct. And again, you can go all the way up to eight terabytes there if you want. The nice thing is that these will be available starting next week or by the time you're watching this video, maybe already available uh, on October 25th. And the number one thing that I was shocked by, all of this power, all this performance usually comes with the obvious downside of battery life. Now, having not tested these yet, I am taking Apple at their word, but holy battery life, these things look absolutely incredible. And beyond that, you can get peak performance on battery alone, like they were plugged in. There's no throttling down uh, when you have these things unplugged. Apple is claiming 17 hours of video playback on the 14 inch and 21 hours of video playback on the 16 inch. And again, the fast charge giving you 50% charge in 30 minutes is bonkers. Uh, if you've used high performance gaming laptops, video editing laptops, you unplug them, generally you are going back down to integrated graphics, fans kick on, and your battery life that's lasting more in the high minutes than you do have going into hours. The fact that we are getting allegedly really long hours of battery life at peak performance should be incredible. These are machines truly for professionals. And if after so many years of Apple just throwing a pro moniker name on things and not making them for professionals, it's nice to see them reverse course. At least remember the professionals, which sort of make up, I think a big portion of Apple's laptop user base. These machines are going to be incredible for editing, for video creation, for photo creation, for production, for people who just want a really fast computer that's gonna last them many of years. I give Apple credit. There's some things I don't like, like the notch, but is far outweighed by the things I do. That incredible display, which also is mini LED, the performance, the ports coming back, the no touch bar, all of that looks to be two really amazing packages. But the big question is for you, are you gonna speak with your wallet? Are one of these in your future or one of them not because you're in the PC camp or they're just too expensive? Uh, I wanna hear your thoughts and comments down below.